folks, this is Podcrash at iOS in Hollywood. How are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> now, no matter who you are, if you have served in our war in Iraq, if you are someone who prefers peace and you're part of the Occupy movement, we are all joined by one thing. We're all veterans of one war. Star Wars. Yeah. It's the only time in the movies when war is good. Because the message of pretty much every Hollywood movie is war is bad. But in Star Wars, war is good. And we're here to celebrate that tonight because they are making new Star Wars movies, folks. If you have been living under a rock and you do not know, Disney has acquired the rights to, to make new Star Wars movies. That's right, a trilogy of Star Wars sequels. You should be applauding that. Yeah! yeah. I'm very excited. I, I'm excited because the movies I really wanted to see when I was a kid, I wanted to see more adventures of Han, Luke, and Leia, let's face it. Yeah! yeah. Who gives a shit? about blah, 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 Anakin, blah, 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 who was forced to work retail on the planet of Tatooine. Uh, if you, seriously, because uh, Watto, his owner, you know Watto, just, uh, Watto was the slave owner who owned Anakin. You know Watto, uh, Republic credits, Republic credits are no good around here, I need something more real. I need you to work retail, Anakin, little Annie. Yeah! There's not much call for a lot of imitation. But I, I, am, I am so honored and proud to introduce seven friends of mine, both friends and geeks, here to join what will end up being a Jedi Council of, of people talking about their hopes, fears, and, and their excitement about this new Star Wars trilogy, and to add a little bit of speculation. And we have an interesting way of introducing each of our panelists. By way of a Star Wars opening crawl. One of the coolest things about Star Wars, of course, is the opening crawl. And each of our seven geeks that are joining us on this panel have written what they think the opening crawl for Star Wars Episode 7 should be. So let's introduce our first panelist by way of an opening crawl. Here we go. Woo! Yeah. We will share seats and microphones. It's a very cozy environment here at Iowa West. Jonathan, I sense by your crawl that you're kind of a cynic. Yeah, big time. What do you, so what, okay, are you at least happy that George Lucas is not going to be directing these movies? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and? So what, what do you think of that? <laughs> absolutely. I'm gonna tell all the Star Wars fans here that, uh, like many of you, I saw episode one twice. Uh, you know, first to be like, Wait, what? And then the second time, you're like, oh shit, that did happen. <laughs> and uh, after about 18, 19 years of collecting nothing but Star Wars, reading all the extended universe, all the comics, everything, just having Star Wars sheets, and I shouldn't have done that. It was in college, and I still have fucking Star Wars sheets. Like the 77 originals where like, Chewbacca looked like a gerbil. Um, <laughs> within, a month, within a month, it was gone. But then I got rid of it. You sold it all? I went to Scorched Earth. I only have one Star Wars item today. And it's in my pocket, and we're going to be playing later with it. We're going to be playing. We're going to be playing a game with our Star Wars. Play, he, 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 Chris literally was like, "I need you to bring a Star Wars item that is your most valuable." And I was like, "It's my not only is my most valuable, it's my only Star Wars." <laughs> okay. I got rid of all of it. But you're so you're. Are you hopeful at least about? Yeah, this yeah. Game? I mean, I don't hate Star Wars fans. Uh, I think that there's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think there's 
Star Wars fans like me who see the Holy Trilogy and that's Star Wars for them. And then I think they're the battered wife Star Wars fans who are like, they weren't that bad, I'll go back to them. You know, and I mean, the crawl is the most obvious thing. When, when, when people are like, oh, but those cartoons are great. I, I just have the perspective that, listen, Anakin Skywalker, all right, I'm thinking fictional, I don't want to be insensitive, fuck it, I'll be insensitive. Anakin Skywalker turned into Darth Vader. Darth Vader's legacy is, he helped the Emperor wipe out an entire fucking galaxy, right? And put him under boot. That's worse than Hitler. I literally, like three years ago, wanted to make a Star Wars shirt that just had Vader's head on it, and it said worse than Hitler, and I was like, maybe you don't make that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, Lucas went and made a comic, like a cartoon that celebrated his early years, and I look at that cartoon, and everybody's like, oh man, Clone Wars is awesome! And I'm just like, oh yeah, the cartoon Hitler the younger years? Fuck oh that God. cartoon! <laughs> and how is that the best product we can get? And so I am hopefully optimistic for all the Star Wars fans that we can unite under three movies that are great. That is, that is my hope. You. And my gift to both old school and better like Star Wars fans. <laughs> that we can all agree that these movies will be awesome. And that's what we'll get in the theater. Alright, well, we'll be discussing that more later. Let's bring up our next panelist. Let's see the next opening crawl. Woo! streaming on the internet on, uh, on YouTube. I want to say hi to everybody out there watching this on YouTube.com slash PopCrash TV. Thank you for spending a Saturday night watching this along with us. Cricket, thank you for joining the panel. Um, you, I, so, I, I obviously you had a sense of humor with your crawl, but what do you think about this? Because I, I, to me, I never cared about prequels. I always wanted to see more Han, Luke, and Leia. Where do you stand? Well, I'm, uh, I'm just hopeful because I have a friend at Spike who I yell at every time I see him, and it's not even his fault. He doesn't even work on that side. But when I saw Jedi for the first time remastered on Spike, and it goes over to the blue guys, and there's Anakin, my reaction was, ew! And so every time I see him, I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, I don't even work in that department, dude. So for me, it's, it's the same as Jonathan. I just want a nice mix of what we want with the new what, stuff. What do we want? Okay, as Star Wars fans, what do we want? It's Let's gonna, ask I mean, this question. For me, I think, that, and this is something we talked about on Gekin, is it's going to be hard for whatever director if they can find one because Del Toro just said no, too. That you're, work, you're they're dealing with a universe that's already set. You know, you can't really fuck with it too much. It's like Star Trek. You have a universe that's already set. You can't fuck with it, we found out. You can fuck with well, it. Well, you know what I mean? It's not like you can be like, yo, he's going to call on his cell phone. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. But what I personally would like to see is I would love to see, you know, if the Jason Solo storyline does go, I would love to see Harrison and Carrie and Mark. Kind of you, guys, you, guys, you guys keep mentioning those three. I want Billy D. Yeah. <laughs> I, want Billy D. I would like an Asian. Because that seems to be. Uh, you had one, me of no. <laughs> Jimmy Smith does not count. Somebody's like Jimmy Smith. Right, let's let's bring up. Yeah, moving along. Let's bring up our next panelist. Let's see our next opening crawl. I know that dude. <laughs> Also, one of the coolest nerds 
that I know. You and I could have three hour, I feel like we're like a gay married couple without, without <laughs> yeah. But I, seriously, we just, we got, we clicked like right away yeah. yes. from the love of Star Wars. You took a very serious approach with your opening crawl, I love it. Well, I figured everyone was gonna try to be funny and they're great and that's funny, but I, I'm so hopeful for these movies that I was like, let's, let's like, give a taste of what it could be. You know, like, remember when you were in the theater in 1999, and as the lights dimmed, it was like, this is going to be the fucking greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely. And then it opened with like a conversation about banking and <laughs> trading routes. And then in 2002 was the same thing. It's like, the, the, forget that last one. Man. The first date sucked. The second date, it's going to rock. And then the second one started, and it was even shittier. <laughs> And the third one was like, I'm not going to get fooled three times. This one's got to be great. And what did he do? He murdered children. So, yeah! <laughs> but, but I really do think that, like, we never really care about those characters. We really care more about Han, Luke, and Leia. It's always been about Han, Luke, and Leia. And the problem has been that George Lucas likes to hire people he can push around. And the problem is that once Harrison Ford finished Empire, and he was moving on to Blade Runner, it was over. He's never going to get pushed around again. That's why he would have, we wanted Han Solo to die. So the problem is that he's had to wait this whole 30 years now for all those careers to end, and now he can get them all again, and they can do cameos and then hand it over to somebody else. Well, that's a, that's a good question. Will we see a general Han Solo death scene in Star Wars Episode Seven? Because I, you know, originally Harrison Ford wanted his character to get killed. He wanted Han Solo to die. Um, in, in uh, Revenge of the Jedi, which was changed to Return of the Jedi. Do you think we'll get to see that? I think that we'll get to see cameos by all of them. I don't know if we're going to see them all. I don't think, Disney's not the kind of company that kills off any kind of character that they can make a doll t-shirt to ride out of. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? They don't do that. All right, let's There's no Bambi's mom around. Right? Yeah, they end up on their islands. Let's see the next opening to crawl. Which, which I love, and uh, I, you're very passionate about this stuff. We're, we've, been, we've been on panels together talking superheroes. Let's sure. talk Star Wars. What do you think? What do you think of this? What, what we are about to see? I think uh, the best thing George Lucas could ever have done was sell to Disney. <laughs> really? <laughs> Absolutely. Really? Tell the us why. Best decision he's made in 30 years. <laughs> Tell us why. <laughs> that and not making a Howard the Duck sequel. <laughs> okay. Those two things together. I mean, when you look at it, just if you put the, the emotions aside, first of all, who could have bought Star Wars? And did you want Star Wars to die with George Lucas? So when you put those two things together, you realize there was no other option. There's no one else that could have bought Star Wars and re-energized it. And there was uh, no, you know, there's, there's nothing else that could have happened. So I'm really excited about Disney bringing in new blood and actually making it interesting. And I really think it's, um, it, it's gonna follow the Pixar model. I really do feel that way. Where, so we're gonna you know, see Pixar, a, digital, a digital Carrie Fisher, is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> we, already, digital version we already do. Uh, but uh, what, what you're gonna see is uh, a lot of kind of artists taking a little bit more control because Disney knows what a huge juggernaut this is. And it's sure, there'll be some little Disney things in there, you know, absolutely. Like, uh, but I think for the most part, I think we're, we're in for a reboot that may actually matter. Hey, Chris, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna disagree with you real quick. I don't okay. think it's gonna be a Pixar model. I think it's gonna be a Marvel model. It's oh, gonna okay. be a Marvel model. Yeah. All right, that's still good. That's still good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Still good. But you're gonna see TV shows, you're gonna yeah. see- There's, you know, there's no question yeah. that deep in the, um, the the bowels of Disney, guarded by lawyers, there is a TV show being developed right now for ABC. No, live action, yeah. Yeah, for ABC, there's no question. Well, he's talked about doing a live action show, but it kind of got, 
kind of got sidetracked, right? They're, they're talking they're about talking it again. again. They're going to see how Shield does, and if Shield does awesome, and the movie does the, awesome. The rumor that came out today was that Ronald Moore was going to be given the reins. Well, I think they already have 50. That's, yeah, good, that's two good seasons. Yeah. 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 All right, let's bring up our next panelist so we can get this Jedi Council going. Our next one. Since you know Jedi, which was Jedi, but it, it it showed the dark side of the Force. It showed the true power of the Jedi, of the uh, of the Sith, and it just it, it's a world that you want to see. You need to take Star Wars, and I'm sorry, and this could be blasphemous, but I don't give a shit about political stuff. I want to see a bitch in space adventure that Star Wars should be giving us, and hopefully with this number seven. Yeah. yeah. And, and a liberating thing for me. I have you some. just pissed off all the fans of Senate hearings in space. <laughs> stop, stop. Don't kill me. No, I have, a, I have a son, Finnegan, he's five. Uh, when episode one came out, or was coming out, I was the guy that went bananas and literally spent thousands of dollars buying Star Wars toys. Every single episode one piece of merchandise that existed, I bought. I'm like, I'm going to be fucking rich. I saw episode one, and I'm like, how could I destroy these toys? <laughs> and I thought about it and saved them and, and hoarded them and kept them. My son turned like three a couple years ago, and I was like, hey, son, here are a whole bunch of Star Wars toys. And he's proceeded to destroy every single one of them. Yeah. I'm proud of my boy. Isn't that cool? Like, yeah. Isn't that cool about Star Wars toys? It's like not one of those things where like you didn't really think about collecting and you thought about actually playing with them as a kid. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. So does how does he? Because he saw it growing up. Like how does he feel about it now? Fin oh, Finnegan is, is super into Clone Wars, and I think that's how it should be. And just kind of forget one, two, and three because aside from Darth Maul. Uh, uh, Yoda jumping around and the cool, what's the theme song, Jules? Duel of the Face. Duel of the Face, like <coughs> the rest of that series can die. Wait, Jonathan London, I saw a look on your face. Yeah. Wait, what commission, dude? Get up on the mic, get up on the mic. And hey, kids, down in front of this and uh, enjoy these adventures of this person who's gonna end up just killing tons of fucking people. <laughs> my, well, my, my son is super into Hitler, so I guess. <laughs> Let's bring up our next panel. Let's see the next video. <laughs> Simultaneously, um, and 
I have to say that like no matter what happens, um, I totally agree. Like whether or not Disney can uh, you know restore the franchise, I think they need to get as far away from one, two, three, and three as humanly possible. Like they need to like completely scrap that. And I don't midi cards. Judge me by my midi cards. I mean, like, like that's my like, shitty Yoda like, like, like Chris, <laughs> like Chris Nolan, that shit. So it's completely different, and people have no like. They can't bitch about comparing. So I, I know what you're talking about. It's like when Planet of the Apes, that new reboot, was as far away from the apes shopping on Rodeo Drive as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Hold on, hold on, Planet of the Apes. Oh yeah, he hasn't seen the Planet of the Apes. I, I just want to say though, just, you know, like, I don't know if I'm defending George Lucas in any way, which whatever, but you know, I feel like he made those for him. And we're just people that happen to see it and hate Absolutely. it. But he loved it, and fucking kids go bananas over episodes one, two, and three. Like they're mental for it. So I think there's a giant disconnect yeah, between they us. Also eat kids things. also like Bieber. Yeah. They do, and he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> let's be fair though, in episode like one, kids yeah. do, I mean, let's be fair, kids really do identify with episode one because. They're assholes. They, well, <laughs> 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 because, because who doesn't like to see a little kid, you know, like racing around and not dying? With a dopey Jamaican slave. <laughs> that's, you know? That's just how, hey, who doesn't like to have an imaginary friend that says dumb shit? Just, this one just happens to be not. Yeah. I have one last opening crawl. Uh, Graham Elwood uh, did uh, a, a commitment, meaning he was going to get paid to do a comedy gig and not be on Podcrash where he would do an unpaid gig. Uh, was unable to make it here, so I created my own opening call. So this is I am the seventh key. Let's see. It. Saying you think you need to Christopher Nolan that shit. Uh, that was great, Chris. That was a really great draw. Chris. Not you again. Oh, sorry, I'm late, Chris. Hey, Chris, who won the Ravens game? You know, sports, American sports. I'm a geek. I wouldn't know anything about uh. football, Earth football. Uh, welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, R2D2 and. Uh, an old colleague. Uh, Watch it with the old jokes. Well, uh, wait, wait, come on over here, guys. Oh, yeah. Thanks for uh, prepping for us. Yeah, well, we just want to get you on the microphone so people can hear you. Uh, and your name, sir? General Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so what's, what do you think about this? I mean, first of all, for you, it means jobs. And I think that then this uh, uh, beleaguered economy Chris, I've spent the last five years in an espresso machine and a coffee bean and tea leaf. That's how I've made my living. Making fancy drinks for screenwriters and unemployed actors. So, yeah, I'm pretty fired up to get a fucking job again. Hey, are you and Peter Mayhew still friends? Yeah, I mean, if you consider a guy I buy cocaine from a friend. <laughs> got to speak during uh, the Star Wars films. You never actually got to, to have a, a line. No, I thought that, that reverb sounded really good. We should keep that going. Why did I never have a line? Well, it's an unknown fact that I was mute until the age of 25. Uh, then I started doing cocaine with Peter Mayhew and I learned to speak. <coughs> Slowly but surely. So are you saying that the reason you couldn't speak is because your uh, firmware update was kind of like that new OS 6 for uh, the Apple iPhone, <laughs> which totally sucks. Everybody agrees that that completely sucks, that new update. So you're saying that your firmware update got blue? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> operating system? I use my operating system to bang chicks, bro. I'm playing it simple. So we're going to see a different side of R2-D2 in this new sequel trilogy, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so, Chris. We're going to see a good side of R2-D2. I can finally be me, maybe. And how do you feel about, um, how do you feel about, like, people playing robots? 
Well, that obviously upsets me. All right? Does it take jobs away from robots? Yeah. Everybody knows robots are out there doing the jobs that normal white American people don't want to do. <laughs> then you dress up some guy in a robot costume, and I'm supposed to not be offended by that? You know what? Humans used to own robots. How sick is that, Chris? How sick is that? Less than 200 years ago, humans owned robots. R2 Unchained. <laughs> Because since the last one we went on an adventure, I've been a retarded lawyer, I've been an archaeologist, I've been a, some kind of physicist that abuses children. I mean, I'm, I'm president of the United States and I flew my own plane. Do, do you have any. Can, you were tired. Were you in Cowboys and Aliens as well? Because uh, fuck you if you were. That wasn't me. That was. Uh, maybe maybe you, you know, you're friends with Luke Skywalker. Maybe you can answer the I think the question is, why do Jedi Knights dress like farmers on Tatooine? <laughs> oh, that was, that was like a Jedi trick you just pulled on you. <laughs> and I always thought uh, ben Ken old Ben Kenobi and old Uncle Owen dressed the same way because they both lived in the desert and were poor. But it turns out that's a uniform? <laughs> Some deep cut questions we're asking right now. Really deep cuts. Casual fans will not get this. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank you guys for coming out here. I mean, I didn't really expect some real celebrities from Star Wars to come to this panel. Uh, the pleasure is all yours. <laughs> thank you. And uh, will I see you guys later tonight? Yeah, you can see me uh, over on Cosmo. Doing unspeakable things. Um, <laughs> and you can see the both of us in Comic Book Live at 11.30. That's going to be it. And that's about it. We're going to watch the rest of this. Cool. Shit. All right. And now I need more blue milk. <laughs> All right. Art, you need to and Han Solo. All right, switching gears a bit, I have a very, another very special guest here tonight. You know her as uh, Leia Organa. Uh, Leia Organa Solo, also, if you're keeping track of the books that are canon. Princess Leia! Ladies and gentlemen, bring up Princess Leia! Uh, this is That's right. Leia, played by uh, Jizzy B. You know her from Defective Geeks. Say hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing tonight? Yeah. Can you introduce our uh, fans? And we're, we're, gonna, we're all going to read this. We're picking parts. We're picking parts here in the panel. We're going to read for you. I'm going to somehow find a place. Let's come over here where there's not any re, you know, feedback here. But we're going to read our uh, fanfic story for you here tonight. And uh, let's let's make sure we get our parts set. Um, I'll, I'll, let's see. I'll, if I, uh, let's see. Narrator is going to be Cricket. Uh, I got Luke. Uh, who's got Yoda? Okay, we got Tori got Yoda. Yoda, we got, uh, who else? What are the other parts? We got Han. Han. Who's gonna play Han? Han. We need a Claw. Jonathan? You play Han? You can be Han. And Josh? John Han. We need a Claw. Josh is playing Han, and then we have, uh, Vader and a Club owner. I'll do that. Vader is a Club owner? Club owner? I can do Club owner. Club owner? <laughs> Alright, and Darth Vader. Jeff, I'll Jeff sure. you want that? You're the whitest guy here, I'll yeah. be Darth Vader. Okay, good. <laughs> so let's start with our the back is Star family. Wars fanfic. Here we go. It's Showgirls. Star Wars fanfic commence. Thank you very much. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Luke ran into the strange-looking building. He was blinded by the colorful flashing lights and could barely hear his thoughts over the salacious music. But... This is where Yoda told the young Jedi to meet him. Master Yoda, I'm here! Where are you? Ooh. That ass you shaking. <laughs> Master, I hear you, but I cannot see you. Luke navigated around the seedy environment, and after seeing all the nearly naked girls dancing, Luke soon realized that it was, in fact, a strip club. Who what the hell, Yoda? Them titties, you shake them. I thought this was an emergency. Luke saw that this is just the place. Luke, saw, Luke saw the nearly empty bottle of tequila next to Yoda. Mm, yes, an emergency. Tequila makes me want those hoes. And a weed man must have. Also, Luke, 
You whine like a bitch. Listen up, you must. I, I, I don't whine. As Yoda tries to make it rain, Han and Leia burst into the club, thinking that they were following Luke into a battle. They both look confused at the seedy environment. Uh, why would Luke go to Nebula Joe's titty tastic titty bar? <laughs> How do you know what this place is called? Uh, I uh, smuggled in some antibacterial soap for them. <laughs> right when Leia was about to tear out Han's throat, the owner of the club, a scummy vecnoid, walked up to the couple. Han, I can find no see. How's my favorite smuggler doing? <laughs> I just got a girl with three boobs in different colors. You love him! <laughs> I knew it! You scrappy, scummy nerf herder! Wait a, just a second. Leia, that you! Uh... <laughs> it is you! That is giving you on your allowance again, huh? Hey, you still got that gold bikini. I can get you on a pole in a jiffy. Uh, well, 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 princess. Gold bikini? I was young. I needed the money. <laughs> Luke, after taking a few shots of tequila with Master Yoda, stumbles over to the traumatized princess. Guys, it is so good to see you. This place is awesome. <laughs> oh, wow, Leia, you're looking fine today. My hair is so titties. <laughs> Luke attempts to do a Jedi mind trick on a very pissed off princess. You want to show us your tits. <laughs> oh, please work. Please work. <laughs> You all can suck it. I am not showing you my tits. By the way, your sister Leia is. My sister? <laughs> no, no, Luke's sister. What? 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 Ha <laughs> ha he kissed your sister. <laughs> you guys know I'm still standing here, right? Whatever, there's a sin law that I can attend to. He comes here very, every week and he cries. I do oh, sense God. something. Vader. <laughs> The group looks over at the corner and sees Darth Vader crying and throwing money at a stripper. Yeah. <laughs> My life totally sucks now. <laughs> My wife is dead. I'm mostly a robot. And I have to give the Emperor sponge baths. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Your daddy Vader is. No! Oh, shit. be true! Search your feelings, my son, and have some more tequila. Luke and Darth Vader start crying and whining together while throwing money at strippers. <sighs> like Bob the right son. Hey, your titties keep shaking. I want to kill myself right now. <sighs> Best day ever. <laughs> the end. Yeah. Worst things I've ever seen, and I was once used to perform an abortion on the Octomom. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Thanks for hiring real actors for that. <laughs> I want to continue with our panel and, and continue to talk about um, your impressions of Star Wars Episode 7. There's very that wasn't it. That, that, <laughs> yes. No, that wasn't. That was not Episode 7. Oh, okay. God. But I want to thank Giselle from the Defective Geeks. Yeah. Yeah. She a lot of horrible fans think on the internet. I was gonna, I was gonna eat me this shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of rumors swirling around about episode seven. Uh, people such as John Favreau as director. Uh, we've heard, we've heard a lot of them. Uh, Matt Vaughn. Like, what do you guys think? What would you like to see? If, if we're all gonna be hopeful here on this panel, what do you want to see in this new sequel trilogy? <laughs> I mean, I, th I think we, you know, all agree that, you know, Chris Nolan is the king of making things dark and making them right. Just throwing him on as a producer, which will help Superman tremendously, I think is the way to go if he still has, you know, his shit in the next couple years, you know. If people can pay, I go, go dark, and that's what people seem to like these days. Keep it dark, keep it bitching, and lots of action. Now, One you, action. You know Disney is talking to Joss Whedon right now. Of course. You know, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, like, well... You did pretty good with the Avengers. Let's see what you do with this other billion dollar franchise. Well, the scary, the scary thing about Disney is that they, they did a, such a fantastic job, in my opinion, with uh, the first Pirates. I mean, that movie was phenomenal, and it had the makings of a huge franchise, which it went on to be, but the next two films were like, hurtful. The, the problem with Pirates is that it succeeded despite Disney's 
uh, meddling. The first time they saw the dailies of Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow, they begged him to change, start over, and he, he told them, no, this is what I want to do. So, uh, Gore Verbinski and, and, was and the Jerry one who had that. He even said, like, I'll, be, I'll take responsibility. Yeah, yeah, they thought it was a complete train wreck. That's why it's called Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, because they said, look, at it bombs, and it's a horrible movie. We'll start over with a different subtitle. So, uh, I, I don't know. Joss Whedon's a good director. The problem is, Wait, which they really, they really took the wrong tack. They really, they really took a different tack with that. Once the first one was decent, they were like, "Well, that was a little too good. Let's really <laughs> fuck it up." For the yeah. Next well, the, pro the problem with part two, Verbinski, and not to digress into pirates, is they started filming without a script. The cheapest thing on the whole movie, any production, is the paper. And if they just uh, start with a script, and they did a great oh, job. <laughs> <laughs> a great job with John Carter. I thought John yeah, Carter that's the Pixar route. was amazing in terms of the marketing. But no, I, like, I, I, I'm, I'm, what? I'm hearing also that they're going to be two years apart instead of three years apart. They're, that they're already... They've Chris, got, the, the they, proof will be in the pudding, man, because uh, they're talking about 2015 summer. They haven't even started day one yet. I know they're in pre-production, but without a director or a full cast, to have a movie of that that magnitude ready by 2015, and then another one by 2017, I, I don't think Disney's got it in them. I don't think they can they can work that so, fast. So we reported on the website today that Joss Whedon said yes to Star Wars, and yeah. Disney was like, no. "You're on Avengers too, yeah. and you've got Shield to yeah you know, yeah to line to produce and." You're not doing a Star Wars movie. You're doing Avengers. So Joss Whedon, as a, doing the eighth or ninth movie, is definitely a possibility. Who do we want as a seven? Yeah, that's, that's really the question. Who, who do you want for a seven? Who do you want for Jake Busey? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Personally, who I want is a director who grew up on Star Wars, who uh, reveres it the way that us true fans really do, is willing to put aside those awful prequels and just make a really good movie, even if it's not this big, epic scale. Uh, Sam Mendes. Who's that? Sam Mendes. <laughs> Sam Mendes. Well, hey, look at Scott Ball, did, man. Yeah, look Scott Ball was across. amazing. And it was an intimate, big budget, crazy movie yeah. you know that didn't have to have the world at You know what's easier? What directors do we not want? John Favreau. John Favreau. Uwe Boll. Fred Ratner. M. Knight. Yeah, see? See how much easier that is? Yeah, it's yeah. easy, yeah. I think there are a lot of directors that we don't want to see, but honestly, what, I thought that, that you were going to have a name coming out of your mouth when you were describing Somebody who grew up with Star Wars, who gets story, who Kevin gets Smith. the. That's what I mean. <laughs> Chris yeah. Moore. So somebody who gets visuals. <laughs> as much as I, I, I was going to say uh, Brad Bird. Brad Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brad Bird. Brad Bird. Right. He's already yeah. in the Disney system. Yeah. The guy can come. I mean, you saw Mission Impossible for the fourth film. He can come into a Forget franchise. Forget that. I, I, saw, I, it. I saw Iron Giant in the theaters. I saw Iron Giant in the theaters and it was empty. And I'm like, guys, this is. I saw Rocketeer. This is awful. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Joe Johnson, I don't think. Mm, but yeah, he's too close. Brad Bird, Brad Bird would be fantastic. Um, my, what you were saying earlier, I'm, I'm off of it. I'm just going to say, Sam Mendes, I mean, the end of Skyfall was like, that made Home Alone canon. That's what that, that was, that was, that was, that was yeah, right, right. it was a Home Alone sequel. Yeah. And it's the last 30 minutes, and the awful stuff that happens at the end of Skyfall, that's Bond's fault. Like, yeah. it was a bad script, and, and it didn't get fixed by the director. And ultimately, it's his responsibility. Someone to steer the ship. Brad Bird's my number one choice. <laughs> I, I'd agree with that. Brad Bird's a really good choice. Yeah, Brad Bird would be great, but he already said no. How dare you? Oh! Oh! A lot of pressure, but let's. You, you know, you guys all mentioned growing up with Star Wars. I know that you know most of us here. Josh, you grew up with Star Wars at least on television. He hasn't grown up yet, though. <laughs> he's still in the process, but yeah. he's just a child. I thought it would be fun to play a little game of war. I have I have brought some treasured Star Wars items uh, from my childhood, some from my childhood, some from other weird things, and I'm going to pit it against everyone here to see who has the coolest Star Wars thing here. So um, I'd like each of you to pull out your Star Wars item. Okay, now pull it out. And pull it out, whip it out, Josh. Well, I'm going to go up against paper. you first. We'll, we'll, we'll go down the line here, yes, sir. and I want you to describe your item. We're going to let the audience decide who's the winner. All right. Um. Who goes first? Me or you? you? You go, Josh. All right. I actually have a. Uh, it's a photograph um, of Han and Chewie, and it's signed by Peter Mayhew. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, thank you, Peter. I just have a. I mean, I'm only 28. I, I have a plushy <laughs> Admiral Ackbar. I have a plushy Admiral Ackbar, and he says. <laughs> um, who do you think the winner? 
Myself or Josh? Josh. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with Josh too. That was great. Give him a big hand. That's awesome. That's great. Okay, next. Corey, you're up. Yes. My my favorite favorite uh, book growing up as a kid was the Star Wars pop up book. one every couple of years because I just destroy them because I literally go through them like they're fucking the great show us the goods yeah, yeah. boom all right I'll give you a little yeah. bit of yeah. 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 Third dimension. hey the pages are stuck together Wait, hey R2 good for you buddy oh wow, that's yeah. great oh, thank you. what is he doing so well, the reason the pages are stuck together is I jack off into it R2's so that's cool. like, you know why this is cool is because before home video this is all we have yes. Yes. this is 3D this is it I can think uh, the crawl would have been the greatest thing in the world if it just stopped after it said the way it was being uh, distributed. <laughs> right, right, right. A 3D, 4D FPS. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm stepping it up. I think, uh, fuck 3D. Um, I am going to show you a custom George Lucas action figure uh, in the original 12 back packaging that I procured from <laughs> eBay probably 10, 15 years ago. So. Uh, yeah, put that again. Why are you going yeah, to no, 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 all right, uh, who are you going for? Uh, you can chant. Uh, Sense of Maya child. Or Tori. <laughs> That's Tori. 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 Star Wars lunchbox I've had since 1978. Yeah. Yes, handcuffed to your wrist. Handcuffed to my wrist. Price Waller House facility. <laughs> I had George Lucas. Whoa! This <laughs> is this is my son's birth certificate. His legal name is Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not putting only. up you're putting up your kid? Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm putting up my youngling. That's a lot of my Not only, not only does this prove what a big Star Wars fan I am, but I can get laid as well. <laughs> In coverage. The coverage is bad. My kid's birthday is May 25th. Yeah. Star Wars Day. It would explode. The saying. entire universe has been gone. The movie well, came back out the Friday it was released in the theaters in 97, January 25th, 1997. She was there. She gave birth. She was there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to just declare Jeff Tucker the winner. <laughs> 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 I'm going to show you what I have. This cleaning is my porn, so I made a Darth Vader cleaning. Uh, no, I'm serious. It's, I just did a Darth Vader. You have a hole in the bed reading that thing. Good, it's for cleaning things. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Lunchbox and I don't know. Yeah, the right. sprayer's pretty bitchin'. Let's <laughs> now, moving on to Cricket League. Cricket, what did you yes. bring as your Star Wars item? I'm gonna see what I have in my bag of tricks. Yes. So uh, my first Comic Con was four years ago when I moved to LA, and uh, I had three things on the th list I wanted to do. I wanted to go to Memobot, I wanted to go to Adult Swim, and some other fun place that I can't remember. Is that a rabbit? No, it is not a rabbit. It's Jesus. Um, <laughs> what this is is this is the first gen C3PO 8 gig Memobot. And this is the proto hoodie that they made specifically for Comic-Con, the gold, which you can't get anymore. Which is not important. What's important is on here. Because every girl should have, yeah, exactly. Every girl should have a, a droid. Every girl should have something to keep memories on. So on this are 16 pictures, the only 16 pictures I have of my dog before she passed away. And she used to let me put like R2-D2 shit on her and like run her around town. Um, Four parts of Dead Set that I got from a certain Mr. Chris Gore. Oh, it's a great series. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't get it from Chris Gore. Um, and a Beastie Boys Beatles mashup album that you also can't get anymore. And plus, I have my best friend is tall, gay, British, and thinks he knows everything because he has a doctor from Stanford. <laughs> so his nickname is Freepio. And mine is R2 because I'm short, fat, and loud. <laughs> uh, that, that's pretty good. I, I'm going to say that you win that one. Wait, what I can't happen? compete against a cute dog, but I do. I've been collecting Star Wars for a long time. I have an 8 track cassette yeah. of the soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have an 8 track player, but he has his Dotson. He's got a Dotson. Chris Mantini, what do you have? I actually have a new piece of memorabilia. Uh, this actually was sent uh, to me by a fan uh, in Japan. 
This is these are chopsticks uh, in the shape of lightsabers. Yeah. And these are Yodas. Each character has a different color for their chopsticks in uh, in Japan. That's pretty cool, but you know what I've got? I've got a, uh, my face yeah. is carbonite. I took a carbonite on carbonite, and I put my face on it. Jonathan London, what do you got? I made this, I'm very crappy. Your, your little, your little, like, CeeLo Green hands are the way yeah. <laughs> So Chris, I, I told you earlier in the show that I only have one piece of memorabilia. I'm now realizing that I have something that's pretty rare in the U.S., but I didn't bring it with me. Uh, Chris and I were in a movie that you can get on Netflix Instant right now. It's a documentary called The People Versus George Lucas. Lionsgate only released it in the West on DVD. In Japan, they put it out on Blu-ray, and the director, Alexander Philippe, gave me a Blu-ray copy. I've got it at home, but... Uh, Here's my only piece of Star Wars memorabilia. It's, it's, 19, it, it's the one thing that I wouldn't get give away because oh, it belonged to my older brother. And when he passed away, I, it's the only piece of memorabilia I took from his room. It's the original Vader. The, the lightsaber is long gone, but you can see the arm sleeve that the Vader that they used to be put to. And so I was like, all right, that's going to follow me the rest of my days. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what? My, father, my, my, my brother died before being able to see the prequels. So. So he won. <laughs> I, I, I remember distinctly seeing these special editions. I remember, I remember he was really, he died the year before the special editions came out. They were advertising him, and I was like, man, we're going to go see that together. And, he, and sadly, he died, but I remember sitting there watching like all the, like the gooey Jabba, and I was like, you lucky I was going to say, Jonathan, you win. I have one last thing. It, um, when the episode one came out, I've only kept one thing from it. It is uh, Star Wars Fruit Loop roll-ups. Yeah. Oh, Ewan! Star Wars Fruit Roll-ups. Ewan! 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 Uh, and uh, may the force be with you. Stick around for comic book live.